Hello guys, nice to see you again, see you speaking for you. Uh, when we met last time, we finished to assemble our nice PLC, but right now it has all the tie wraps around, if you can take a look around it. It looks like real stuff. Just take a look at it. You see all that? So, the purpose we meet today is to check what we've done so far before we go to assemble the other part of the trainer which is the output trainer so we want to know that what we've built so far is working here on this side you have the inputs the switches here you have another input which is our sensor we're going to give a quick check to the sensor because it's more accessible and then here are the outputs on our interface now next thing we do we just give a check a quick one to the sensor to see if it's operating fine we're going to use a multimeter it's on voltage so at this moment if we connect here a wire the lead of the meter for negative and here the output of the uh, sensor we're going to be able to take a measurement so as long as the sensor is not in use at this moment, the voltage on the voltmeter shows a zero. When I put the hand in front of it, suddenly the voltage goes to almost 24 because the sensor now is able to reflect the light from my hand. Both the emitter and the receiver are in the same body. So the light comes from the uh, emitter, it hits my hand, it goes to the receiver back. So we'll be able to watch it again. Okay. I put a hand in front of it, 24 volts, I remove the hand, 0 volts. And that sensor I found is about uh, 30 centimeter sensing distance. So if I put my hand here, it sees the, the hand. If I put my hand here, it still sees the hand. If I put my hand here, no more. So the distance is bigger than 30 centimeter. So the sensor doesn't go so far and exactly the purpose. You don't want somebody passing by one meter away to trigger your circuit. But here close to it, it just works fine. So far so good. Now, similarly, when we're going to have a program inside, what's going to happen is going to be that if I'm going to connect the same black of the meter to the black wire here, which is the ground, and I'm going to connect to any output let's say this one this one here in the moment i move in the moment i'm going to uh, uh, make uh, the proper connection that contact here is going to show me something but now because there is nothing connected to the contact of the relay inside i cannot see a big change we're just gonna wait okay so how we're going to check if our uh, half trainer which is only containing the PLC is actually working surely you need to have installed on your computer any version of the software we know driving uh, on run PLCs which is called CX programmer so if I'm just launching such a software to see how does it look like it's gonna look something like that CX program so you're going to see the window of the software okay however at this moment you're not supposed to know much about the use of that software so what we're going to do is a different thing we are going to we are going to go in our folder I created for you in the uh, Google Drive remember before we had the bill of materials folder and if you go inside there were the four files for the bill of materials then there were the two files in the uh, A switch bracket when we built the bracket and now it's going to be the third folder here which is called check outputs program what do you have to do? you just have to download that folder first once it is downloaded then you go inside the folder and here there are two files wearing the same name you have to pick up the file having the extension CXP because the extension CXP comes from CX programmer that's the executable program for you. 
once you have again the software CX program or any version including an educational version or a trial version installed you just have to click this one two times like this and the program is going to be automatically opened by the software the purpose of doing this is what we want to transfer from our computer the program into the PLC we just mounted for that you are going to need a standard printer cable everybody has at home somewhere if you don't it's only costing a couple of bucks and this end you connect it right here under the cover into the USB connection so now it's gonna be connected to the computer at that moment once you have the physical connection done there are two steps to do the first step you see here in the top somewhere is this yellow triangle with a thunderstorm with a lightning uh, sorry uh, symbol on it if you don't see it then it's the same thing if you go here in the tag called PLC and on this particular tag which is the same symbol the lightning on the yellow triangle saying warp online so either of them is good I'm gonna prefer to press this one the yellow triangle and now we're about to connect the computer to the PLC surely I want to continue because your PLC does not contain a program yet so we just make a connection take a look what happens so at the beginning of these lines all of them they become greener okay you don't worry about what happens here because it's not a point you have now to do the second step which is to transfer the actual program you see on the screen whatever it is into your PLC so I repeat if I'm not there I'm just in the software because I clicked two times on my file I have two steps to do first step click on the lightning say yes the connection with your PLC is done second step now you go on the PLC type here in the pop-up menu you have a position called transfer where do I want to transfer my program to the PLC so I just go here and click at this moment leave, leave this one here that case unclicked only click programs symbols comments program index but don't click this one and say okay when you do the program is going to transfer into the PLC you answer yes or okay to the questions take a look the transfer takes place download successful so then I click okay no problems are around with the wiring and I have to return back in the run mode of the PLC I'm going to say yes I close that window I don't need and now whatever is on the screen I'm telling you what's going to be the effect by taking a look now because the program is inside the PLC by taking a look in the top of it in the moment I'm going to press any switch this is the switch 7 you can see right here the switch 7 right here where I have the arrow of my mouse actually if you count the switches from 1 to 8 this is the switch 8 but it's connected over the input 7 of the PLC because on the PLC the inputs are numbered from 0 to 7 and by doing this the output here is energized so if I put my hand in front of the sensor I can stop it I remove my hand it goes green on if I put my hand, it's stopping. So I checked this output is working fine in the output you can see right here in the top of the PLC. Right now I'm stopping it from the switch. I use another switch and I do the same. Now is the switch number seven or the output six of the PLC, the input six of the PLC, and this is the output six of the PLC. And if I put a hand in front of the sensor, I can stop it anytime, you see this? I check this one as well and if I go further on I can check each of them one by one and anytime I press my hand in front of the sensor I can control I can stop it, okay so each of them can be checked this is the way we can we uh, conclude that what we wired in the first part our PLC trainer itself is gonna be okay because you don't have right now you don't have the second part the output trainer built 
I am going to use one already built to show you what actually can you check by making a connection. So remember, when we are going to build the second part, a flat cable is going to control, actually to connect the output trainer to our PLC. So I just have to plug this one here. And by doing this, now both of them are going to be connected. So what happens is, if I press any of the inputs, take a look, I press the input in the top, which is the input zero or the switch one, my output, one of my outputs go on and I can stop this anytime I put my hand in front of the sensor. Take a look how nice it is and you can control it anytime. I stop this one from here, I don't need it anymore. I put another one on. So now I have another output on. So I put my hand in front of the sensor, I can control it. And I go further. I do this, I control the next one, which is going to be another output, because the color is different. I can control with my sensor. So then I go further, now is a white light, I put it on and I can stop it from my sensor. Next one is going to be a blue light, okay? So same thing, I can stop it from my sensor. Next one is going to be a fan, you can see it here. You cannot see the fan turning from a distance because it's very quiet and it turns fast. However, you can see the light turning around it and you can stop the fan, the fan goes back on, you can stop the fan, the fan goes back on, okay? And what's nicer, here we have a motor, take a look. It goes one direction like this and you can stop it anytime. It turns again and you can stop it anytime or you can stop it from here. And when you go with the other button, the motor goes the reverse way and you can stop it anytime. And what's more about it is because of the arrangement we are going to do with these relays. If the motor goes one direction and accidentally you give it a command to go in the opposite way, it goes even if both switches go on, which is going to be very wrong for a motor, because of this arrangement to the relays here. And this is what we're going to build. That's what we're checking today. Just last thing to do, we can use our meter now because having a connection from our uh, PLC to the outputs, the 24 volt or 12 volts we're gonna use for our 12 volts is gonna be later on distributed from the PLC to the outputs. So in that moment, if I connect myself the black lead of the meter over the ground, which is the black wire, and here I'm going to use the last output, if I'm watching the multimeter, Right now I can read 22 volts, which is not far from 24, meaning that at this moment the voltage on the contact is right here, and there is zero voltage over the output, which is the motor. This is why having zero volts, the motor won't turn. But in the moment I put the switch on, the motor turns because all the voltage is across the motor, and my switch being closed, what switch? The contact of the relay I measure now with the voltmeter, it shows almost zero volts because there is no voltage remaining on the contact, all the voltage is across the motor. That's what we're going to check. And if we do this, we can do this for all outputs. Now, if I'm checking the last one, I'm going to check the first output here. Take a look. You have a voltage. If you can see a voltage in the moment, I'm going to put the output on. Take a look, it changes, okay? So that's how we're going to check our outputs. In the moment, we're going to have a connection to the new output trainer we're going to build, okay? So today we just checked our uh, first part of the trainer, which is the PLC trainer itself. And just another thing, regardless the presence or not presence of the program on the screen of your computer, okay? If you disconnect the cable from the computer, the program is still there in the PLC. So in the moment you are going to use any of the switches, you can still control. This is the fan. You can still control the outputs, including the motor. See? So you have now inside the PLC a functional program just for checking purpose. So far so good. We are going next to build the second part, which is the output trailer. Thank you very much for your attention, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.